Ship. I'm your host, Names, and I'm here with Raven and Lothar. And we have a surprise for you because, you know, this is a LAN event. Insomnia is originally a LAN event, which means there's a lot of people here playing games. And instead of just sitting and doing nothing, we do play games. We have the second tournament actually going on with all the pro players who got eliminated. They did play Insomnia Hearthstone Open. Yep. And right now, we came to the moment where there's a grand final being played. So we had the winner's bracket, Cursed and Indurin playing. Okay. Then Indurin won versus Cursed 3 to 2. And Cursed came back from the loser's bracket to the grand final. And we are going to have it now. Cursed versus Indurin. They are ready. So guys, Indurin and Cursed, they are pro players per se. Yeah, I mean, uh, Indurin's been on London Conspiracy. He was previously on H2K. Um, and he's really strong player, really uh, powerful on ladder. He's got a lot of good results there, but just not quite had the uh, the results to actually finish up high in a, in a big tournament. Um, so he had a bit of a rough time at DreamHack uh, the other weekend. He uh, didn't do too well in the Swiss, and obviously he didn't make it through the main qualifier for the uh, the main event here. But it's good to see him actually, you know, push through because something to realize: the tournament these guys have been playing is like it's pretty much full of pros. Like it's all the people who didn't qualify on Friday went into the Saturday and Sunday tournament. So this tournament itself, although we've not seen much of it or any of it on stream yet, it's definitely no pushover to get to the finals. Absolutely, all the pro players are playing, and and Indrid is from Denmark. He was top four at IEM Karovice, yep. that orange okay. one. Yep. Uh, he got uh, qualified for the Vigame House Cup as well, and he's been to many, many top eights in the um, online cups. But Kirst, he is from Greece, and he is the original creator of the Agro Druid, the, the current Fell Reaver version. Yeah, and I think if you speak to a, a lot of the pros, like they will have nothing but great things to say about Kirst. I mean, just being to a few of them, they're literally like, Kirst is just one of the best players around. I think he's recently signed to Esports Heroes. Yeah. I believe, so he's just been picked up by a team, which was only a matter of time, to be honest. I'm surprised it wasn't even sooner. Because uh, as I said, if you asked any of the pros, oh, who, who's not signed to a team that should be, or, you know, he's good enough easily, and it's like, yeah, Kirst, of course, he's top of everyone's list. He's also the final boss, because he told me he was in so many finals, but he's always second. <laughs> no the pain, bro. No the pain. <laughs> no the pain. <laughs> All right, so Lothar, looking at those classes, what can, we t what can you tell me? Well, I can tell you that Shaman might just win 3-0 straight away. You like Shaman? Yeah, well, the Shaman is so powerful against classes like Druid and uh, Warlock. They're just with the sheer power of the damage from, from the spells, you can just breeze away. But uh, Kirst is starting with the Patron Warrior against a druid that is sporting mounted raptors instead of Shade of the Next Shamans. I, I like the change because in a very aggressive meta game, the mounted raptors are giving you more value because you can trade, you can also like use it as a, as a trade of a two drop and then still have a minion to help you clean up after it, uh, after like... Oh, I was going to say, there's still a chance this could be Aggro Druid, oh, and it actually okay. is. So it playing is. Aggro Druid versus Cursed. The it's irony. Funny. <laughs> the yeah, irony, it's right? really good. And Cursed isn't playing Druid. Yeah. This is kind of funny. You know, uh, Indrid brought the deck that Cursed created originally, and I'm um, going to see how... Uh, at least Cursed will know how to play against it, right? It's like, thank you for the deck, mate. I'm going to bring it to the final against I'm you. I'm going to beat you with your own deck. <laughs> well, it looks like a decent Innovate um, Raptor 10. It is, and this matchup is interesting because normal Druid, I think, has better matchup versus Patron. Aggressive Druid can be stopped, but Aggressive Druid is one of those decks, if it curves out pretty well, it can just kill you before you do anything. Yeah, because as we can see in Indrin's hand, like, you don't wait for the full combo with this Druid deck. You build up some minions, then Savage Draw to just Ooh. burst for an insane amount. Double Savage Draw might be a little bit heavy, considering the rest of his hand. So he does have to throw away the Raptor, but what's going to drop out? Come on, two. It's okay. okay. It is okay. a minion yeah. that Another gets deck. plus two attack from Savage Road. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Rather, well, the almost will we'll play that for sure. I'm just thinking, it's probably the turn when uh, Indran, if it doesn't pick up anything relevant, he will just coin swipe. Just to deal with the armor smith. Oh, no, that changes a lot. Yeah, that's a great you card. Ha you have to go for coin shredder here, don't you? Coin shredder and trade for the armor smith. Yeah. Because the problem is, he needs something there that we can see to be able to punch through the death by and dread corsair that's certainly going to come down next turn. Maybe not certainly, but it feels like a good play. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He's thinking about. Um about a savage roar, but I don't feel like there's a point in keeping the coin. 
Yeah, because what you're going to coin into, is he hoping for like maybe a Thal Reaver for turn 5 or something? Uh, what you coin into this deck is basically combo. Run to combo out on turn 8. Yeah. Because this deck is not running Ancients of Lore. It's, as you said, for Reavers are probably the biggest card. Force of Nature as well. Yeah. I just don't like avoiding building up the board. Yeah, it's nice to get Shredder on board because it's another yeah. minion, as we saw from the Raptor, that at worst drops a minion that can be Savage Road, so... And the, we see it from Cursed, five. it's an amazing opening with that uh, Death Spite and the Pirate. And he has a follow-up as well with the Pilot Shredder, even Execute if there is Well, any. the difference here would be if he did play the Shredder, then it would be a Shredder on board. Uh, or, yep. or at least the token from the Shredder and then another minion uh, versus this 3-3 instead of a 1-2. And now the swipe feels kind of bad because, as you said, Lothar, like, you, you want to build the board up, but now you're just going to swipe, yep. poke for one, and you know that the, the weapon's almost certainly going to go into the 1-2 next turn and be followed up by the Shredder. He knows that he's playing against uh, a patron warrior just because you know the, he he saw the goal from the beginning of the yeah. game, right? So he and they played before. They they played. Oh yeah, right. And, and they well. played before. What? So he should have think about how can I kill the patron as soon as possible? Because first of all, it fits my playstyle to play the aggressive druid, but also the the um, the savage rose will have value still yeah. in the upcoming turns. It's not like I have to do it right now because I have five minions on board and I will not ever have. That, that, that many again. So uh, it feels like a, a huge waste, but not, not using the coin into Shredder. Yeah. What do you think about Alex Straza in Patron? Something that's not common at all. It is an interesting pick. Because on one hand, Patron struggles or can struggle to do like the burst damage now. Mm -hmm. But on the flip side, like with Alex Straza in, say, Control Warrior, for example, the idea is that you're solely focused on removal and armoring up. So then Alex Straza normally gets quite a lot of value in terms of the. Uh, between the 15 health it sets your opponent to and the health they're actually at is normally substantial. And um, whereas in Patron, like you can play the removal game and wait, but you normally kind of want board as well. With cards like Shredder, you know you can still push for damage. And then the Alex Straza becomes either a little bit janky to play on your opponent, or it becomes like a defensive option to heal yourself. Up yeah, to I, I, I think it's a, actually a, a good choice because right now Patron seems to have a couple of open slots and people start experimenting with at least Star Seeker. Maybe we'll see Rafam. With Alex Straza, oh, if you are just focusing on trading on board and keeping up big, big board, Alex Straza will be that burst you need yeah. to go through. And you still have Grom, Inner Rage, and Taskmaster to finish the game. Yeah, so it just alters the, the playstyle slightly by including Alex Straza. more options. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to see what the impact will be on the, the games going forward. When I was um, thinking about Alex Straza and Patron Warrior, I just don't like it at all, okay. when, to be honest, because it's uh, when you compare it to Rafam, and this is, I think, it's very viable option right now after the fourth uh, fourth wing. I think Rafam is just way better than Alex Strauss because it's a third set he, of patrons. Yeah, it's a third <laughs> set of patrons. First of all, it, it's an additional burst which might be needed, mm -hmm. which is very similar to Alex Strauss because it, usually it will deal. If you play mid range patron right now, it plays uh, cards like Paltrowers, which are kind of meant to deal some damage to your opponent, yeah. so the Alexstrasza will not have full value. Yeah, exactly. Then from Rafam, you have um, you have the uh, the option to just burst down your opponent for almost the same value as Alexstrasza would do. The body's do. nearly the same size as well, yeah. very similar. It's both big game hunted, so it's not, not yeah. a big deal. The only differences, differences is the fact that Alexstrasza is a defensive card also, when Rafam is pure aggression. Yeah. And uh, this might be the only thing why Curse is playing Alex Straza instead. But at the same time, Pat Patron is such a great deck at being defensive. Yeah. I, I just don't see a Arms point to have, a, again, another card that this... You don't, you don't really want your, your actual health as a warrior as well because of the armor. Yeah. Yeah, to be lower than 15. Yeah, like exactly. That's, the, the, so. that's what I mean. It can be a bit awkward to play. I'm kind of surprised that he's playing the Alex Straza instead of uh, anything else. Yeah. That yeah. Alexstrasza might actually help him overall, because he is already at 17, and if Inderin feels like he just wants to deal even more damage, Alexstrasza can bring him up. But this, that's definitely a question that we can ask him at some point when yeah. we're because he is a really good deck builder. Yeah. And the good thing for Curse now is he's seen both Savage Roars, so he knows that, that there's two cards now out of the deck he doesn't have to play around. That's another thing I wanted to say, that it's, it's, it was such a waste to use the second Savage Roar. It, it, I didn't anticipate that he will use it at that point. It feels like he switched from playing um, aggressive druid into mid range. Yeah. And that's not how 
this game should have been well, played. Well, play mid-range true, then, if that's what you want to do. You, yeah, know, exactly. you know what I mean? Yeah, you, yeah, just, yeah. you play the deck that's actually built for that playstyle. There is a possibility of um, trying to kill everything that Patron is throwing at you, but it was easier to execute with the previous version. Right now, there's just too many threats. Yep, swipe coin at Shredder is going to be pretty nice here, though, so we can finally get that Shredder on the ball. Wow. From turn three to turn seven. No Amazing. Shredder. <laughs> I mean, it, it's just this is uh, this is what you get from being too defensive. Yeah. But what's going to be working well for Indrin here is, oh, okay, the slam changed a few things. Um, the the shredder probably would have soaked up the weapon, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and now it's whether he wants to execute or use just a weapon attack to face maybe. Yep. But then Lothab next turn suddenly safe because there's no despite second charge to clear it up. It does the execute, right? It's not that bad, it's even like a whole six turn, mana, right? so... Yeah, 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 something yeah. good. Like, even a 4-1 pirate wouldn't be terrible here. I'm really surprised that he's not using the death spike, though. Not attacking face? Yeah. I'm really surprised by that, because at this point of the game, you will use the Alexstrasza defensively. So you're not yeah, getting so all the damage. damage yeah. yeah. And playing the armor smith into the death spike was actually a cool move. But he can do it next turn. He's taking the damage. Well, he will lose the armor. He, he's relying on Indrin to run the shredder into the armor smith. Yeah, now. and this will not happen. I mean, yeah, like you play. Well, yeah, you play in the aggro deck. Just ignore that, like that one armor smith. You've already seen one set, uh, one patron as well, be used. Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah. you just can't expect. Look how many cards are left in cursed deck. You can't expect the second patron. Ooh, that's an amazing drop. Yeah, it's it's giving him more health, and now he can almost clear this. Well, you can attack into the low tip and then Alexstrasza yourself. And uh, attack into yeah, the raptor. That's pretty well. nice. Do you attack into raptor actually? Uh, it probably depends on what comes out of the shredder, right? No, you have to attack into the Lothep. You have to kill that first. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you kill the Lothep. Oh, you mean by attacking? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah because sorry. it will give your opponent a minion. You, you take damage. Yeah. You just got to see what comes out the Shredder to be able to decide on that one. And it's Crocolisk, okay. That's not bad. Yep. And now Alex Ooh. Strazer. So Alex Strazer is that. used defensively now and from six health. So, you know, we said it would struggle to, to get your actual health that low, but Curse has managed to make that one work, and suddenly there's an 8-8 body on the board that the Druid isn't really built to deal with, because this isn't mid-range Druid, so yeah. the odds on a BGH. But only if Indra will have been more aggressive, especially with the Paltish Well, Shredder. he's on 6 health then. 6 health and 3 armor, so that's quite low at that point. Yeah. So if he was a bit more aggressive, then yeah. He opted to use the, the second Savage Roar to trade with a Paltish Shredder. That was 5 damage wa wasted, just... For no apparent reason. But honestly, guys, he is pushing forward with damage. And Alex Straza, even though it's a great card, can deal a lot. This this board is threatening still. And for now, Curse doesn't have much to gain life or to draw cards. Yeah, and even Grom top deck doesn't like do leaf or yeah, anything. Of here, course so. you're right, but it's all about efficiency. And it seems like the deck is just now it's being on the brink of exhaustion. Because the druid has no way of drawing cards. Uh, unless f you get a loot holder from the Palta Shredder. Most, most of the cards you actually draw are dealing damage. Force of Nature is dealing damage. Druid of the Claws we've not seen yet as well. So Druid of the Claw would be a really good uh, draw now. Now the Alex Raza should attack into the 2-3. You don't want to add yeah. the damage in uh, case there would be a bigger, bigger drop. You might go face actually, because... Yeah, that's a good point, yeah. Have yeah, because, well, because Druid of the Claw, chart, so four damage, uh, and then the hero power is not enough for lethal. Is uh, Force of Nature lethal? Force of though? Nature is lethal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That Whether he wants to play around deck. top deck. Oh, man. <laughs> Even though there's no Savage Roar, this deck is still threatening. That Druid. I actually, I like attacking face here yeah. more. Because Cause you, your opponent either has to win next turn, yeah. or you pretty much finish the game. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, so Curse decides to deck for Indiren. play it safe. Living Roots. So you can clear the Alex Strauss, right? Oh, come on. Yeah, but at this point, you... Yeah. No, 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 no. You, you need to threaten lethal next turn. If you if you clear Alex Strauss, then you have no way of winning just by top deck. Top deck. Drew to the claws eventually. Look. <laughs> but you just can't rely on that. Your opponent will be building up armor faster than you can uh, hero power him. So every single card that will be top deck and it will not deal instant damage is just f pushing you further away from winning the game. It's it's tough, but uh, you probably have to just go for face. Uh, five damage to face, and then your opponent will be at eight. If he uses armor up, that's ten. But in the end, goes for the mid-range plays, and he is keeping... He's consistent with his plays. 
So this is lethal if Grom is drawn, right? Because of the inner rage. Yep. Now let's see what are we drawn for cursed. Battle Ooh, rage. Okay. That's, that's, that's good. Nice. And it's still lethal with Grom. Ooh. No Grom there. Well, you can use the execute on the you battle rage. Right? Yep. Because he will be at 13. And if the minion will have two attack, uh, that means you can then attack with this. But it can be and a be away from any kind of reach. I know you're Tron. No. To attack. Okay. That's nice. Yeah. You Do you actually in a rage a one one here? You want this for Grom, I guess. Mm. Yeah, but with the with the frothing berserker, I know. Hmm. I'm surprised that he didn't use the Inner Rage, as he said. Well, he's Inner Rage the 2 1, sorry, and then kill a 1 1 to save 1 damage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And well, you will have lethal next turn. Well, Force of Nature cannot clear this, so. Still can. But you're not dead to Force. It looks uh, like the I Alex Strauss is going to be the card that's actually winning this game. Yeah. <laughs> what, uh, we talk about this Alex Strauss so much, and it's just winning. What I didn't like about the um, the Living Roots is the fact that the game is not being dragged longer than two turns after seeing that board state, and just dealing two damage with the Living Roots to the face had the same effect yeah. as playing those two minions, yeah. but he lost four damage with trading the Palter Shutter, so that means he had no way of winning the game at all. Yeah. Yeah, I would like attack in there. And in there in Concede, so Curse is taking this game one with a Patron, with Alex Straza, an interesting choice that actually worked here uh, really well. Just yeah, I mean, Cur Curse... Put a threat. Yeah, yeah, but you can see how that could still be difficult, though, because then Alex, Alex Straza afterwards, the Druid was on about 18 by the time he played it. Yeah. So if Curse was on anything close to 15, maybe even higher. Mm -hmm. And like the Alex Strazich opponent is like, yeah, it's still deal th three damage or so and put an 8-8. But you just think in certain situations, that's going to be hard to play for your, whole, for your whole turn as well. Because he got, got a good turn where he could uh, do something and then play Alex Straza. This Alex looks like... Team. And looks so like this Malagos is Malagos. Or... Yeah, this oh, is Malagos. Yeah. Okay. So this should do quite well versus the patron. Yeah, it should. It should. It was worse before with Wars and Commander, but right now it's all right. And you, you can play actually two copies of certain cards, which helps. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Reno. Black and Corruptor, one of the most annoying cards against um, Patron Warrior. It is. And Hellfire is also pretty good to, to clear the board if Patron actually goes for it. And sometimes you have to. And looking at Cursed, her, cursed Hand, it's amazing. With the Death Spite, Patron, Enrage, Whirlwinds, he can just throw all the patrons, but it is really risky. There are Hellfires, there is Shadow Flame. But I think this is the way you have to play the matchup. Otherwise, you, if you just drag out the game and you play patrons at some point, there's bigger chance of your opponent having the Hellfire already. Yeah. So it's better just to go rush the situation, yep. even though you might just spawn just like one additional patron. But you uh, push your opponent to use the Hellfire anyway, so you don't have to exhaust your um, your resources as usual. Yeah, that's true. Uh, and looking f at Indurin's hand, hand is quite good. Not only the Hellfire, the Twilight trick as well. And he has Torison with Malagos and Sulfire already. So he has a great, great mid game, and he has his combo to finish the game. Yeah. Silence. Um, I think one of the Drakes is going to come out. One of the dragons, because like silencing the, uh, the card draw versus Patron is obviously huge. But when if you play one of the dragons, then um, it's only really going to get one card draw anyway. There's always a worry for it's an execute enabler. Mm -hmm. And a rage maybe into Acolyte as well to draw cards. But yeah, I agree that I think putting a big dragon right now might I think be... you just want to play something, right? As yeah. opposed to just Owl and then and then what? Soulfire? Like, you know, if you're going to Owl it, it's still a 1-3. It's just drawn one less card. Patron and it can so still proc execute, so... Yeah. Well, I guess you can just use Execute, draw one card, Execute, play Unstable Ghoul. Yeah, but this is one of the problems that Patron is facing versus his deck. There are just so many threats you want to execute. There's Guardian you want to execute. There's Second Guardian you want to do Would something. Would you not want to... Um, yeah, it's tough. 
You can't really play the death spot because then you had to use the inner rage. Maybe that's actually. Can you not just coin death spot and still use execute? And whirlwinds? What about? No, 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 no. I think if you want to play death spot, then you use inner rage on the acolyte of pain because. As I said before, you don't want to overcommit to the patrons anyway. Yeah. So y the inner rage might be used on, on different targets, so I wouldn't be surprised. Whirlwind might be okay. Just just Whirlwind, draw a card from Acolyte, attack with Acolyte, they didn't co coin uh, Death Spot. Whirlwind has huge value uh, against yeah, elsewhere. explosions, right? It does, but uh, you do draw two cards from it, and you deal with the Drake, and you keep your Execute, which is a great card versus this kind of deck as well. Ooh, battery. This will be important. I like this specifically. Not only you develop Death Spite, that will be useful for the next turn. Where next turn, most of the time, is Scoraptor. You are able to cycle some cards. And you still have the Whirlwind effect for patrons if you want to go with them. So next turn, is Curse looking to do the patron in a rage? Or do you think it should hold off on any rage? No, you have to do it as if he. You have to do the SAP. Maybe your, your maybe your opponent is just missing the Hellfire. What he does? What, what does? What does he do then? Yeah, exactly. If there is no minion on board and Hellfire is the only out, you, you go for it. But now there is the Twilight Drake, and that changes a lot of plans because you can't go Patron in your Rage and execute. Yep. And the the use of coin was actually a big deal last turn. This is why I like the He could have used Inner Rage to yeah. save the coin, yeah. Because exactly. he, he had, then he had Whirlwind as well, yeah. if he wanted to Whirlwind yeah. next turn. But then it's even weaker to Hellfire. And at least with this, he was able to cycle some cards. But it's not terrible. He is getting some patrons here. And Twilight Drake will only be able to kill one of them. And Hellfire is, is doing the same thing, mostly. Just clearing the board. So is there anything else in the Hellfire here? Well. There's a tap. Yep, tap. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at it now, and the tap <laughs> looks okay. Oh, use the one you topped it. <laughs> use the one you topped it. Oh, what a mistake. You should do that to just punch it's... your opponent. No, no, no. It's not on that. You actually say to your opponent, I don't have the second one. Yeah. yeah so you yeah, can yeah, go yeah, into, yeah, this, yeah. into the second wave of patrons because I just top deck the Hellfire. I don't have any other options. Use it. And that's really important in some games, just to show, to mind the game with your hand. And a lot of pro players are actually using these mind games. Hmm. Looks like Patron is getting into troubles. 16. 18. I mean, you just Thorison, right? You have the Malagos little mini combo. You have Dark Bomb and Soul Fire in hand and Malagos. Yep. So, Emperor. Emperor turn. Maybe you just want to wait one turn so you can play Blackwing Corruptor and Hero Power. Because you have the second Hellfire, so you don't care about the. Uh, free damage than minion. You saw one acolyte of pain. Uh, the only problem might be a pirate. I, I, I would actually favor here either the emperor, it dies to the death spite though, or just the uh, the the uh, black and corruptor to deal free damage, get the attack from the weapon anywhere, did the same the same damage, but it's eight in general, and your opponent's far away from having Alexstrasza, which you saw less than uh, this game. Sorry. I love I love emperor here because if he attacks into it. He's taking five, and then you you have your full hand discounted. So even though you you're not winning on the next turn with Malagos in the combo, you is he gonna, are in a great position. Is he going to straight PGH? Yeah, this is fine as well. This is fine as well. You you build up the board, and you can still do Emperor on the next turn to prepare for turn nine kill. Yeah, and even with armor up, you've seen have we seen one armor smith? We have right. Well, with this setup, you actually have lethal just le next turn with the. Hellfire, so Dark Bomb, yeah. Soulfire. Yeah. Like, even with just uh, Corruptor. It was right? 8 damage, so your opponent will be at 8, so you have it lethal anyway. Yeah. Even with armor up. It's so funny the Malagos is never needed. I mean, sometimes it's useful, but most of the time, it's I think so the, much burn. The, I think the threat of Malagos is more valuable than the, the card itself, if that makes sense. Yeah, it so your opponent has to, if you drop Emperor, your opponent has to play around that potential combo, even if you don't have it in hand. It's fear equity. Yeah. So now it's uh, four of lethal. So it has to be. Um, Owl Emperor is fine. Right? Yeah, well, Emperor is setting up lethal for the next turn. Just so far, Dark Bomb with Malagos is. Uh, 17, 17 damage, right? So a shield block will help Kirst to just sustain the burst from the hand, but not uh, the, the, will not resolve the problems with the minions on board. Yep. Yeah, this game is lost, but um, there's no way to come back, probably. 
And looking at the lineups as well, so Indrin has his Malilok. You would presume that Cursed Shaman is Aggro Shaman, mm -hmm. which can normally do quite well versus Malilok because you're just too quick for the deck yep. to deal with yep. it. But then, so Aggro Shaman beats Malilok. Then yep. it's well, Indrin has Paladin versus the Shaman and the Paladin Warrior. Paladin can also lose to the Shaman. No, versus the Shaman and the Paladin, sorry. Yeah. yeah. So like if, in the, if, Cursed, if Cursed picks Pal uh, Shaman now, and it goes Shaman into Warlock wins, and Shaman was Paladin, he has a good chance to take yep. his there. Do we know what Paladins they are? Uh, yeah, I actually have it noted, because the games were uh, being watched. So Enderin is playing Midrange Paladin, and Cursed is playing Secret Paladin. Oh, okay. All right, so just going through the motions, uh, trying to do his best with what he has, but uh, we know that Enderin actually has a 17 damage combo with Malagos, Dark Bomb for 8, and Soul for 8 for 9. And on the back of this, he's killing the Patron. 316 no scope. Impressive. <laughs> uh, uh, this is 1-1, one, one. and now Kyrus, as you said, will p probably pick the Shaman. Uh, it's an just impressive tech, to, impressive oppressive tech <laughs> against uh, the Warlocks in general, and that's the new Predator. Uh, for the Warlock class, like oh, we always were uh, saying that uh, Hunter is natural predator against Warlocks, just because the hero powers are just so, <laughs> um, you know, uh, just basically like designed against each other, yeah. right? Uh, but from now on, Sir Finley, oh look at that, Sir Finley, <laughs> Sir can, Finley. can give you the same hero power as Hunter has, and you have better spells to actually burst your opponent yeah, down. I mean, so the, the way the, the game would work late game is you hope you can survive long enough to taunt up and then say, okay, Hunter, you only really have hero power, maybe kill commands and quick shot. But yep. when you say that to Shaman, then it's more like, oh, you only have double lava burst, double crack. Yeah, you're a secure. Double lightning bolt. <laughs> it's like, yeah. That's a little bit too much damage to deal with. Even, and even if you don't have the Hunter hero power, you can get Life Tap. Yeah, Life Tap is great, and Druid hero power is, is great. Like, even if you get Rogue, like whatever, Mage as well, like whatever deals damage, feels better than just spamming totems. Here we go. And, uh, and does the Life Tap. Life Tap, life tap. Yeah. Life tap. Yep. And that's actually pretty good with the hand he has <laughs> as well. Yes, oh, definitely man. not bad. Because uh, he needs to draw into something a little bit better than he has at the moment. Yep. Doomhammer Rock Bite is obviously nice for a lot of bursts later on, but there's a few turns it's going to happen before. Let's uh, see what we did discover from Dark Paddler. Uh, it's a Young Dragon Hawk, Angry Chicken, and Blood Imp. One of the worst I have ever seen. Yeah. I mean, oh, I man. Still, I still like Blood Imp, to be honest. How's the, sh the Shaman can't kill it. Yeah. And it just continually buffs any Unless Curse is playing the version of Elemental Destruction. That's true. Yeah, but I think it's the most value you're going to get, because Finley already just kills Dragonhawk, right? Well, if only the Dragonhawk would be a dragon, I would actually have some synergy with the deck. But That's it's actually true, and he <laughs> is missing a dragon right now at this very moment. Um, you said the Hammer and Rockbiter is uh, some damage later on. I think it's actually key that he has it right now, because the fact that he has 10 damage with it, like even more, like 14. If you play the Hammer, you attack for 4, and then you have Rockbiter. My, oh, oh my god. Yeah, it's like, he doesn't even need that yeah. much space. H having the cards in hand is fantastic, and while well, same with the, the live tap from Finley means he can draw into the other stuff he needs before uh, Doom Hammer comes into yeah. play. So, yeah, this is huge. The fact that he can be able to just do consistent damage if going forward. If he has a chance to actually do this, we do have a double of fighter. After that, he can just lava burst, do whatever. That's nearly Malagos burst yeah, it levels. It's <laughs> actually... And that's a very, a very uh, clever move from Cursed here to not go face with the Finley Abusive Surgeon because it's actually turn free. Uh, sorry, uh, it's. Oh, he used the coin, never mind. I just wanted to say that he will use the coin for the farce here, but uh, yeah, it didn't make okay. sense in this situation. Alright, so we continue tapping. Just getting those cards. Light, lightning Bolt is even more damage. For now, we just uh, keep attacking with Finley. Finley, so much pressure! How do you deal with that 1 1? <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of awkward. <laughs> but you don't want to deal with it, do you? Do you just do you crackle face? <laughs> Tap crackle. Well, I can crackle into lava shock, so you can play Doom Hammer next turn, deal four damage. Uh, that's uh, that's a lot of damage. It is. I think you can still continue tapping because at some point you will be able to just uh, burst play down. everything anyway. Yeah, but I, I would not hate just crackle face with um, with la lava as well. Hmm, interesting. Um, you can also use Lava Shock after Doomhammer to unlock your crystals and get those providers. 
You definitely do not want to overload yourself right now. But do you lightning bolt the 3-3 three, three to guard Finley? No, you need, to, you, you need to keep him alive. Then you just use overloads. one of the rock biters. <laughs> you just use the rock biter here to clear the 3-3. Three, three. You don't have to even. You can just go face for one. That Farseer is inconsequential. It doesn't do anything by itself. And you do have burst to finish the game. 16 damage from the rock biter, and then you have uh, even more. Oh, he's going for it. Really? I really didn't like that turn. If you tap, then you go for the dog biter to clear the force here, or you just don't do, the, the thing do, is, do anything. Or you just go for the uh, lightning bolt, lava shock, or even crackle face. Just deal as much damage as possible yeah. to set up a doom hammer to five because it's so important to have I, that weapon. I think yeah, the weapon is important, but it's important in turn five. You still deal 60 damage with it with the rock biters. So if you deal four on five, doesn't matter that much. If you have out of place. What? Wait, what? 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 So he can play the... Uh, yeah, he unlocks the crystal. Yeah, but, but this combo is so, impo so important after you play the Doom Hammer. Because let's, let's say you play Doom Hammer on 10-6, right? You can just play it on turn and 7 with Rogue seven, ten seven 7 will be 2 mana locked. So you have 2 mana for Rogue Biter and you're missing the mana for the Cracker, right? Then So you play first Lava Shock, then you can follow it up with the Crackle double Rock Biters yeah. and just finish up the game on turn 7. The thing is, uh, there is a chance that there be, there's some weapon destruction being played in Malalok. We've seen Uzus sometimes. Sometimes there is a Harrison Jones. So... <laughs> See the note there, just yeah, pop yeah, up. Saw, While a minion has stealth... Ooh, he's <laughs> playing the elemental oh, destruction. And this is another reason why you shouldn't use that uh, Lava Shock. So yeah, because you have L active. Ellie destruction, right? So. Yeah, exactly. And also, he didn't go for the Rock Biter. And this is... I don't know. Well, he just wants to... This is a hidden burst. I think the problem is, if you use one rock biter there, then he pushes him low enough for the Warlock to maybe play heal back. Yeah. Whereas this isn't. But it's okay for you. He plays the heal with red. Ah, yeah, but this turn, can he not just rock biter, rock biter for 16? Yeah. And then lava shock? And uh, not lava shock, crackle. Crackle. And then he might draw into something else as well. Well, he can start with like the... Like a lightning bolt? He can start with the crackle and see if he just deals six and then just win. Um, if he doesn't, he can still go for Feral Spirit. He has, some, he has some options. He divided a lot of damage, which uh, which is resulting in not having lethal right now. Do you time. go for the heroic potential lethal here? Scrack of phase. Like, crackle oh, six. six. Happy lethal. feast for winters. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's going to oh, this is oh, nice, man, actually. Crackle first. Over. Yeah, this is nice. And that's oh, six. my <laughs> God. <laughs> wow. So that will rock biter now and eight damage. OK. Not Twice. punished. <laughs> well, you know, this is the Shaman. Like, Shaman can do those things. Aggressive Shaman and uh, Indurin, even though he had a heal bot, just dying from 22. So to stay focused now, I think Indurin has to think less about how he actually lost that game and more about that was a bad matchup anyway. Well, Instead of just being, like, burst down from 22 on turn, what was that, 7 or 8? It was turn 7, yeah. 22. It, it, it's hammer time. <laughs> Kyrus is so composed. He's super... Silent and peaceful here. Okay. <laughs> Talking. Yeah, but like, look at him. He is in the final again, and you can see that he's not nervous at all. He's just playing his game. And he's playing against a mid-range paladin, which should have a really terrible matchup in this case, right? Getting yeah. Sir Finley again. Sir Finley and Lepinome. And on sure the coin as well. You can make coin there to play both, right? Yeah, you play both. Yeah. So small gonna wear lightning bolt and lava shock. Mm -hmm. Keep the keep the minions. Try to get a trog or to, um, free, free up that turn too for uh, hunter hero power. What Indran has to get is a zombie chow. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah. It's, it's a good, good second choice. Yeah. 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 All right. So no one drop from Indran, and there is the Surfinly play. Sometimes there's merit to not play Lepernom on turn one. Uh, but only in some situations, like when you when you know that your opponent will deal with it. I, I like the juggler play. If you look at both players' hands, how different would the matchup be if Indrim was on the coin and Cursed wasn't? Much yeah. Then you could coin out the creeper and then go into juggler, and suddenly you're in like quite a lot of control here because he's gonna play Lepanon by then. Yeah. yeah. Uh, by the way, the, the juggler play was nice because there was nothing really from Paladin to contest it, and you do get the, the two juggles for sure. Yep. Oh, yeah, steady shot. Steady shot. Power. Oh, but there's Kirsten also life just taking his time. So many good choices, right? If the middle hero power would have been a druid, all three would have been playable. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, Dagger Mastery is playable if you get a heal and an armor up. Mm -hmm. You can still play Dagger Mastery to just continue doing damage. Yeah. <laughs> when yeah, you have so the, that weak of an option, then... Yeah. It is, is Steady Shot the clear pick here? Because it looks like with it, with his hand as well, Steady Shot is obviously consistent damage and generally the right pick. But there would have been merit to actually pick Live Tap there because his hand now could do just a uh, couple, just a couple yeah, more cards. The the Live Tap deals damage to you as well. And uh, you know that actually what you want to do with the deck is to just to deal damage for mana and two mana for two damage. It's very yeah. reasonable. Yeah. I need them like... Every single every single card that you will draw from your deck will probably be damaged anyway. So you're just being more consistent with that and use your mana more efficiently because with the life tap, use two mana to deal dam two damage to yourself to draw a card to play that card. So that results in using more mana just to have um, damage. Right? And you're playing versus Paladin, where Paladin normally can't really deal with Steady Shot. Yeah. But the card camera did come out with some pretty nice trades and now the Creeper's taunted up there and Finley Certainly can't do too much about it. Yeah, Finley can't do much, but uh, it was free damage to face as well. So right now, Enderin's actually at 20. And Shaman can deal so much damage so fast. Yeah, abusive hero powers. You just use hero power yeah, every yeah, single yeah, yeah. turn. Every single turn. No matter what we draw, you always use the hero power right now. Unless, of course, it's Doom Hammer on 5. He already <laughs> has 10 damage in hand. Yep. <laughs> it's just so crazy. All right, no heals for Indered. He will try to fight this board and do something, but Curse can just continue doing damage to fight. When you think about it, the Belcher is not that helpful. Nope, not when they're <laughs> just spells. There is no minion with spell taunt yeah. in the game, right? And uh, I think that Curse should use the, the Rock Biter weapon as, as, as possible. All right. All right, Nymph. I mean, knowledge. Well, both is <laughs> basically having spell taunt, right? I guess so. I'll give you this one. <laughs> Nobody plays both. Rockbiter this, uh, this turn? I guess so. Rockbiter face to deal even more damage. No, he's trading. Mm, I don't like that. Uh, I really With Lava like Burst that. and Lava Shock in hand, like, this it, is the, the it's first not terrible. hand. It's, it's not terrible, though, because with this, he protects the Frog Spirit on board, so he is wasting that free damage on Juggler, but he is probably... He's gaining two points. damage from the weapon, yeah. definitely going into the, uh, the Feral Spirit. Exactly. I suppose. And this board doesn't even kill those for a spirit, anyway. Hmm. This is kind of tough here. Do you do you have to slam a uh, quartermaster to be able to play the board? You can just play Belcher. Why not? It's a great five drop. Oh Ooh. man, this is Doomhauer <laughs> after throwing the, uh, the rock better away. And it's it's weird. You might actually want to Lava versus the Belcher to be able to deal two damage to face. With yeah, the now we have to do it. Like, if you committed to that scenario... But you're locked. You will not be able to do anything on the next... Oh, no, you actually will be able. Because yeah, you can Lava Shock next turn. Yeah. But you can't play Doom Hammer. Yep. That's a problem. time, though. And it's it's fine, because one taunt is out of the way. And there are not that many Belchers in, uh, in Paladin. Well, you can expect two. You can probably expect also Defender of Argus, maybe one from midrange. But that's it. It sounds. Yeah. True Silver's not a terrible pickup here, because um, you can actually kill off the 2 3 without taking any damage. It's basically a, like a double armor up for yeah. Ender, and um, that's very important. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think he, he has to play it this turn. How good is Quartermaster? Because you're essentially racing, and with Quartermaster, you kill. You could Quartermaster and try and. Um... The problem is you're already at 15, and if you don't heal up immediately, like. Well, the thing is, Quartermaster clears the minions oh, yeah, right. and he's yeah, still yeah, on the right. same yeah, health, yeah, yeah, right? right? But, it's just, but you're not able to squeeze in a hero power yeah. with Quartermaster, whereas with the weapon you are. I actually really like the Quartermaster this time. Because you use the spiders to clear the 2-2. Two -two. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Like you still that. hold your weapon as well. And you have Dr. Boom on 7. You hope you're not, not dead right there. And then with two silver, you, you try to set up Beepo yourself. Uh, well, this way he's set up, setting up a Quartermaster next time. But yeah. the problem is he's not... Took damage. He took damage, exactly. There's another Lava Shock. Well, let's say he will use everything here, right? That's Six damage. Six damage this turn. Eight. And next turn is eight damage. It's exactly lethal. 
No, wait. If he if he uses uh, hero, lava shock, hero power, lava and shock. Next turn, six damage. Yeah, right? it's six damage. So it's six. Four from six. the doom hammer, two from the hero power. Oh yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah, so we still. Yeah, but, but then again, let's be honest. The odds on drawing two damage from the shaman deck. Really? Yeah, but you will no, not no, have no, but he will have not have not have mana. Yeah. yeah. Unless he draws a crackle and rolls four. Okay. Yep. Interesting. Yeah, he's going for it. The there's so many burn spells. We can roll Lightning Bolt, right? Oh, no, it's no, one no, off. He's one off. It's one off. Keeper of all the man. And now the plan kind of burned, because you can't play um, either Quartermaster or Dr. Boom. You have to play the Trucible Champion. Yep. Unless Otherwise, you lose to so many things. It's just it was ridiculous. the turn before. <laughs> you can actually get Rockbiter as well, the second one. He didn't use a Crackle yet, right? No. No, no crackles. No. But you, you might actually be forced to play Quartermaster anyway and try to set up the two turn lethal. Because if. Is it a two turn lethal? You deal 9, yeah. 12, 13. And then yeah, that, that is two turn yeah, lethal. Yeah. What you've got to think about is is there anything that's going to do 8 damage that wouldn't do 10? And, and sort of judge how valuable that is. Rock, so Doomhammer, Crackle. Um, you've seen one Lava Burst. So eight is probably easier here. And now that's nine, that's 12, 15, 19 damage next turn. So it's still Very lethal easily. next turn. Yeah, so it's pretty good actually. If you feel them, it's still lethal. And that's Ooh. actually much. Well, a, he needs Crackle and lava elemental burst. destruction. What, could, he, could he draw and burn? Yeah, he can. Lava burst and Crackle, right? And then hit for, for yeah. 10. Is there anything else? Uh, he can actually get lightning bolts, lava burst. Will he have enough mana? Not really. I think you have to, you have to draw, right? But you, well, well, you will win anyway next turn if you play Doomhammer and you still can play it. So, next turn, if you play Ancestral Knowledge into Doomhammer, you will have four mana next turn. You will still have two cards in your hand and the hero power, and you will deal another four damage with the Doomhammer. So you most likely will win. Yeah, I mean, well, you, can you can't Doomhammer hero power. You can kill the minions as well. That's funny, actually. If you, what, what if you just kill the minions? But then, like Tyrion might be coming next. Yeah. Time. Well, that means game for Indoran. Yeah, on the back of the Quartermaster, and Shaman will be out. And Indoran actually one versus Cursed before because they faced each other in the winners bracket, and Cursed just came back from the losers bracket to face Indoran again, and he is. In a bad spot, he's only left with his Paladin, which is a secret Paladin. Yeah, and mid-range normally performs quite well versus that deck. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Just to remind you guys, this match is the grand final of the Insomnia Hearthstone Open, which is a side event. We have many tournaments happening here for many different games. And our main event for Hearthstone, Insomnia True Silver Championship, is not the only tournament. There are many players having fun playing games, participating, playing Hearthstone. Hmm. For now, it looks like they both playing Midrin. <laughs> oh. But nope. Nope. No, no, not oh, anymore. Not anymore. Two secrets in the opening hand. Don't want to see that. Indirin for now doesn't have small minions, but he is mulliganing things. Let's see. There is Conte Creeper, which is good. Oh, it doesn't look that bad. I don't like the Noble Sacrifice in one because it's a kind of waste against Masterful Battle, and you know the opponent is looking for that card. Yeah. Oh, look at that. <laughs> How many times has that actually happened <laughs> this weekend? <laughs> Feels like every single game one of us calls something that just gets drawn off the top. It happens, yeah. We do call a lot of cards, though. Yeah. So usually how this matchup goes is uh, the mid-range Paladin just tries to all the value the Secret Paladin, and if it, that's possible if um, most of the time the Secret Paladin doesn't draw the Mysterious Challenger on turn 6. Otherwise, um, the Midrange Paladin has, has to answer with a, with a Peacekeeper or even better with a Keeper of Uldoman uh, just to deny the value from um, from the Avenge, from Redemptions, and just have a good, good way of clearing the board. Yeah, that's, that's right. And right now, slow openings. Cursed Keeper is a four drop, that's something. So what's the game plan here? So Cursed just has to be super aggressive, right? No, I don't yeah. think so. I mean, um, still, 
there's no way of, of course, there's no way of um, trading in this situation because you can bluff the avenge. So you should just go face with the Abyss of Surgeon and Hero Power. You know, the opponent has a coin, but he can't really use the Consecration yet because it doesn't make any sense. And um, you have a Keeper of Ulderman for turn 3, which is insane good in this situation. Yeah. yeah, you just want the minions on the board to buff, and yeah. the, the Creeper exactly. really helps with that. The best thing is that you can just bluff the Avenge. Yeah. That's, that's the most important thing. And I, this is actually kind of bluffing the Avenge, but at the same time, your opponent will just go into the Noble Sacrifice. Yeah. I, I, I can't really understand It's funny, this. it's like it's bluffing the Avenge, but at the same time, it's still correct. Like, because you're just setting up uh, setting up the board, no matter what, the uh, the Keeper of Alderman's going to have a target next turn. Yeah. Keeper of Ulderman will be really good on that turn mm. four, but right now in the end. But I, I really don't like the, the trade. Oh, actually, if he had Consecrate, that would have been ruthless. Yeah, I really don't like the trade. It, it, it gave so much options to, to Indoran in this situation. Not only you lost free damage, but you also gave the Consecration a very good out. Yep. And the Mass of a Battle is still great. Like, the Mass yeah. of a Battle just kills uh, this is a noble sacrifice, then you sacrifice the two one ones into the one one and the um, abuse of sergeant. It's perfect. You wouldn't be able to clear two minions otherwise. And, and suddenly the, the keep of all them and it's, it's gonna be nice, great. but the you can still be dealt with. Yeah, you know, instead yeah, of sort of running away with the ball control, yeah. it's, uh, it can still exactly. be dealt with. Look at our players by the way guys. It, it's funny how Curse is bathed in light and Indurin is just the darkness. <laughs> Yeah. Play Warlock then. Oh wait, he was playing. Yeah, he was playing <laughs> Warlock. Warlock. <laughs> Good versus evil. Okay, so I mean, is Shredder good enough here? Is Shredder good enough for tin four? What about just coining Quartermaster? No, not really. Mm. You'll probably Quartermaster would be better later. Yeah, probably Belcher is the best option. And would you kill off the Creeper and then one of the tokens? Nah. I would just play Belcher and go to face with two damage. I was going for the Quartermaster after all. He will be able to deal with his board and he is getting a 2-5. And both guys, they really go for the board presence for now. Getting the damage, the Creeper will have to trade. If, if Cursed continues trading, this is what he's going to do. There's no serious challenger for the next turn, so unless Curse top decks it, it kind of does look right. Well, he will, right? Yeah, of course. Of course. It always <laughs> happens. Yeah. He has Tyrion, then he goes Mysterious Challenger into But bit. there's the Keeper of Ulderman and Peacekeeper, but at the same time, there's a lot of minions for, for Curse to be just buffing up. Well, if he doesn't get anything, he's in a bad spot. Belcher is still solid. He can kill off the 2-1 uh, the with his weapon. Mm -hmm. Kill off a 1-1 one, one with his 3-3 uh, and then just play Belcher if he needs to. Yeah. It's pretty okay. I mean, how afraid are you of Blessing of Kings on the minibot? Probably not that much. No, nah, not really. Even if it happens, like, whatever. Yeah, the 2-1-1 one, one still die, don't they? Keeper is something. It's not Mystery Challenger. We can kill off the first half of the Belcher now and leave a 3-3 three, three minibot and uh, keep on board. Wait, what? No. Would what? you not want the 3-3? Three, three? That, that was a mistake. If you buff up your mini board, it's still 3-3 three, three and not dead. As it, or 2-2, or two, two, as it is now. Yeah. Wait, if you buff your mini board, you lose the 1-1, one, one, the last 1-1, one, one, right? Do you value the 1-1 one, one that highly, though? Would you not rather have a 3-3 three, three than a 1-1 one, one and a 2-2 two, two in this You now? do have a competitive spirit. And the 3-3 three, three still dies to the 3-2. But your opponent, I don't know. Just lights justice. I know there's a second one one, but like lights justice just deals with one of the one ones anyway. It's a tough one. Well, if you have a free free and a one one, you lose the one one to the weapon and free free to the free two. And right now, at least you have one more one one. But in this situation, you can clear the keeper of Ulderman with the free two, and you you are left with the two two, which is kind of awkward. Because it dies to the Consecration. So many complicated boards. 
Whether you play though, you can maybe you can just shredder and your power. It's mm, yeah. I'm wondering if, if this is this as safe as it's gonna get to play uh, true heart. I was thinking about true heart. Like get it down now while you're not under too much pressure. And your opponent didn't play Challenger on six. Mm -hmm. But, but you know, has Dr. Uh, uh, but there we go. <laughs> only a matter of time, everyone. And also he has a tin eight to him. Yeah. So even though he didn't have any cards, he's slowly getting those big pressure minions on board. The keeper of older man, I, I think like this card was so important to keep. To just deal with yeah. Tyrion and the... Yeah, deal with Tyrion, deal with Dr. Boom. Like, you have the Peacekeeper, but the option with uh, just playing the, the Justy card like, like uh, less than, I think it was very, very uh, important just to have board control with something that's more re reactive, right? And yep. both Justy card and Paltrow's were feeling like a better option for next yeah. year. Yeah. I just like the Justy card because then it's done. And then you can, you know, at least match the board most of mm -hmm. like every single turn for two mana. Yeah, I, I agree specifically because Keeper is something that's really flexible you can use in the future. Yeah. Like even if you don't see exactly what you can do with it, like even to have that plus two damage, which Paladin is often missing. Yeah, mm. yeah, I agree. So Tyrion and Boom on board. Um, Boom is not that threatening with an attack. We well, can kill the. the Tyrion, but you have to sacrifice the whole board. Uh, but I think yeah, it's the only to. option. Can't really do anything else. And the that rest of his minions don't really fit together. What yeah. about either? Is one mana off beat? I mean, to do this, then Lothar uh, Shredder would be insane. But he's one mana sure. And then, then go for Justica actually. Justica yeah, Justica. Yeah, Justica Hero Power, power seems like yeah. the best one. Yeah. It's he, basically he eight five. five. So eight yeah. five for eight mana. Yeah. Not the best deal, but it long term, long term, it's long okay. term. Yeah, was good. And just and for when the mysterious challenge do come, if the game does go that long, having the tokens is really important to just prop the secrets. And then Curse will be in an awkward spot because he has the Ashbringer, so he can start going for face. But or then trade with the one ones. That yeah, five attack weapon for the, the one one. It's just so bad, man. But it's very important to kill the Tyrion this turn, just because you play around Truce of the Champions, you play around massive battles. Because the opponent doesn't want to lose that card, yeah. right? Doesn't want to lose the weapon. That master for battle doesn't look that good anymore. So do you just go aggro face? Because if you start trading, it doesn't feel that great. Oh, he's gonna kill the true heart by luck spins. So protect the love. Uh, okay, it, it makes sense if you want to play the love. Just going for face is dangerous because there are heals. Dr. Boom. Now Dr. Boom and summon well, two more one one seems okay. So if he assumes that this is an avenge, he doesn't want to attack into any kind of creature. So he checks first for noble sacrifice, then he will then he will assume that this might be either repentance or or avenge or competitive spirit. So he will try to pro probably play uh, the Lotep and Paltashar instead of the Dr. Boom. He made Zombie Chow into Repentance. Oh no, Zombie Chow in this situation, you're trying to race. Do you, do you need to heal though? Do you need to race? If, if you attack now and it's either Avenge or Comp Spirit, if it's Comp Spirit, he's too off lethal if he doesn't trade. Mm -hmm. And like two damage, you've not seen Blessing of Kings yet. That's true. And um, yeah, I mean, I suppose there is only Blessing of Kings and I guess Consecrate. That could come out. There's nothing else because obviously the weapon's locked in. Wait, so he's two damage off. This is two, six, eight, he's ten, good. fifteen. Yeah. If he gets consecration, he just wins, right? Yep. Consecration, keeper of Ulderman. No, keeper of Ulderman doesn't, doesn't help. work. Is plus one. Mystery's challenger is pretty good. But it I doesn't. I think Indrin's in a good spot now. He has boom bots, a lot of uh, little minions to trade in. Doctor Boom, because obviously. Curse Doctor Boom is only a 2-7 at the moment. And then he has Healbot Lothab next turn, which is just going to prolong, uh, prolong the game. Well, what you have to do, you have to put your opponent mm. on 5 so you can actually win with the Ashbringer next turn. This means that it actually you don't have to attack with everything to face, right? Um, <laughs> you can attack 8 into... He has one spare minion. Yeah, you can, he, he has one spare minion. So if you actually can heal something, do not die. Is, is he dead next turn? It's 9, 11, plus 3. I think it depends on Boombot. Yeah, it depends. So on do you trade one in, do you trade like Dr. Boom into a Boombot now? I would actually like going for face. You don't have Noble Sacrifice. 
Oh wow, he just kills the bomb. I did not anticipate that at all. Well, he has to go. He's dead to Quartermaster, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, Quartermaster was dangerous, but you've seen one Quartermaster already, and there is Ooh. a Tyrion. I wonder if Curse is playing Silence. Do you play Silence in Secret Palace? No, not normally, not really. No, I usually don't. You don't. I mean, these boombots could change quite a lot. Eight to face. <laughs> <laughs> Incoming. Come on. We've seen it before. And it goes to face. Ooh. Was it free? How much was it? Was it free? Yeah, yeah. Free. Yeah. No big game hunter for Indran. Yeah. No way to draw any cards there. Well, oh, Dr. Boom soaking a lot of damage. That Dr. Boom was punished by the bombs. Yeah, but it only has two attacks, so it doesn't matter. But you can kill the small stuff here. Slam Turian. And you will survive. But it's about winning. So. Tyrion will be so good. Tyrion's he can, he's still hero powers for two one ones, right? Yeah, yeah. So this is looking quite nice. <laughs> oh, man. This, this hero power is something to do. You always have to think about the quartermasters. Ooh. It's no silence. So what's the best course of play here? Just... Um, is there anything? Because you, you have... can't face tank. Yeah, you can't face tank. And y even if you kill the Tyrion with your board, That's then you're lethal. dead to the attack. That's it. Yeah, it's lethal, so yeah. You're just dead. Yep. There's no way for Cursed to just be out of this situation. He's in a pickle. <laughs> yeah, he can't get anything here. So if he goes into Tyrion with two minions, he heals Tyrion, but there's a bringer. This means there will be nine points of damage. He can't heal and he recognizes it. So Indoran is our champion here. Hearst, Insomnia, Hearst in open. He takes it. He wins versus Cursed. What's the point? I, d I actually don't know. The price? Let's see if I, I have it I think it it's around 2,000 UK. So wow. it's a uh, uh, quite a lot of one. Yeah, yeah. Is, is how, much, how much? I think it's around 2,000. I'm not 100% sure. Oh, that's pretty good. It's, a, it's around that, because it's the prize of previous I-Series, I think, which mm -hmm. has been around that mark. So again, don't call me on it, but I think it's around that sum. All right. If if that's not it, you'll have to uh, pay in the end yourself. Fine. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. But yeah, it's... Um, a great champion championship for Indran in this tournament, which was stacked as well. We had all those pro players playing. I feel like Powder, uh, Freaky, Blackout, Green. Pretty Sheet. much everyone, yeah. Who all the guys that are here. Who didn't make it through top 16. Nice. I think everyone played in that, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So that was a big tournament. And for Cursed, oh man, I, Lothar, how does it feel to always be second? <laughs> wow. Shot Thank fire. you. Come on, Lothar, share. Thank you. Share. I mean, it's a really bad, but. Really bad, especially in Hearts, really bad feeling because, uh, as we talked a lot of times, um, it seems like there's an emphasis put on always the winner. Yeah. When, although we, we are playing in a, in a game that being consistent is more important than being a one-time winner of a tournament. Yeah. And uh, I just hope that this will be more recognized in the future. Just being, I hope to see more articles about top eight players from Swiss tournaments, from those open, really big open tournaments like Greenhack, like Insomnia. And uh, this will bring a lot of a lot of attention to the other players that are usually in the top, but are still missing that win. Yeah, know? and it's uh, it's really on us, like all of us here, mm -hmm. are just bringing those top eight players, and it's on you guys, the viewers, to recognize who is in the top eight and why they are here with all the deck lists. It's also on the players, because they need to write about their their tournaments. Yeah, it's like, yes. hey, I've been playing in Sonya tournament. I was top four. This is my report. Those were my decks. Those yeah. were my choices. From from my experience, people like to read those stuff. They just like to read about the tournament, about the tournament experience, about a something they didn't attend to see how it was. Maybe would that will convince someone else to go to a tournament just to see, well, uh, how, how was the travel? What were the options? Did, did he stay at the hotel? Did he stay at the hostel? Did he stay at a friend? Or, or those are the, those small things that can Absolutely. convince other people yeah, to for, actually for the uh, compete. I think it was the time to win tournament where a player called Two Bears got second place. Mm -hmm. uh, after that, yeah, I think he lost a six in the finals. He uh, he wrote a full on report for mm -hmm. um, what he brought, why he brought the decks, and then went through every single game, who he played, what what it was like playing them, what he prepped for it afterwards, all the way. So that was really good to read. So I, I agree that'd be awesome if uh, more players did that. Yeah, and Brian Kibler does it all the time because he has uh, magic backgrounds. So yep. He's uh, writing those reports and sharing his experiences. And I would love to uh, to read Life Coach. 
Oh, but how, he, that, how God, did he do you want to read a book? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why not? Li life coach on life, you know, maybe about Hearthstone. That would be pretty cool to read. Life coach, the life coach. He always prepares and he actually streams um, the preparation process. But still, after the tournament, it will be amazing to read what he thinks about it. What was his mistake, maybe? Or maybe he thinks there was no mistakes. He still enjoyed the tournament, had fun, lost to RDU, and he wishes RDU well. <laughs> He had you fun should too. write it for Lothar. him. You should write it for him. Just Maybe. five bullet points. Maybe we'll ask Lothar to write it for him. And like life coaches only just yeah. stamp it. It's like, yep, that's my report. Yep. <laughs> Great. Great. Okay, let's go to the break, guys. Don't go anywhere. The semifinals. The, no, wait. Yeah, we actually let's let's recap. Um, so we have we are starting with our semifinals, and we will have. Let's actually look at it quickly. Yeah. Exactly. Super JJ versus Legendary. And yep, that is the, the first semi final, and then a visual versus RDU. Super JJ inviting himself for the qualifier. Legendary doing pretty good with the rogue. So we have those two rogues playing there. Uh, the better rogue will get to the final, and then visual from the UK, a local guy going for the UK qualifier versus RDU, who won versus Life Coach. And if you haven't seen that match, you should watch the yeah. BOD. You should watch yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Definitely after, one of the, the after this tournament, of course. And we will not spoil who won. Oh, wait. <laughs> you can actually see that on the screen. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching so far. We still have three more matches for you. Those two semifinals and the final. Don't go anywhere. More hearts after the break.